Welcome back all. Today we're going to go ahead and jump into a next chapter. So we're still sticking to some basic stuff and today we're going to have a look at interaction with the user. So we will attempt to make some sort of an interactive program. Basic, at it, basic as it may be, it's still a form of interaction between the user and the program itself. So in this particular chapter, I will show you how to input values from a keyboard. We will also talk about some advanced things regarding variables and their declaration. Our first example will illustrate basically how to write a program that prompts a user to enter an integer as an input. And then, I don't know, outputs a squared value of that number or something like that, doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new project for a new chapter. So just go ahead and go into new project, uh, console application. Next, make sure you select C++, click on next again, and let it, let it stay on. I'm going to let it stay on desktop, but you can basically put it anywhere you want. And I shall be naming this one, uh, I don't know, we shall name it, oops, sorry, my my bad. Uh, I've been, I've just messed up my notes, but it's okay. Let's just call it interaction with the user, so. Oh God, I can't see. In, interaction with the user. Hopefully I've spelled that in a proper way. Go ahead and click on next, finish, that's it plus on sources, main CPP, and already you are given this template. At a certain point of time, we might actually be using a template or creating our own, but for the time being, uh, we will be typing everything ourselves. We're not skipping one thing at all. Okay, so let's, let's begin with the inclusion of a library a library from whose resources we will need. And on top of that, let's go ahead and do a bit of a zoom in as well. So in, in uh, include, and here we shall include IO stream. So input output stream. Down below, we will go ahead and declare our main function main, do this, give it a scope, and now let us begin. Type in int number semicolon. So first of all, we are declaring a variable number of type int. This variable will hold the user input. Next up, we will type in std. So we will use something from std namespace, cout, insertion operator, and we will write something simple here like enter an in the integer. Excellent. So let's go ahead and close it. Uh, line terminator. And with this, we are going to prompt the user to enter an integer. Basically, this is going to get printed out onto the screen and say to the user, hey, enter an integer. Very well. But now we need a method for accepting what the user inputs. Again, we will use something from namespace std. Type in std colon colon c in. And we will do greater, greater than sign number. That's it. So input from the keyboard. And this greater greater than sign is basically the opposite of lesser than lesser than sign. It is called and referred to as extraction operator. It extracts the value from a variable. So st you have std colon colon c in, which represents our standard input from the keyboard and then puts it into a variable number. So we will accept some sort of an input from the keyboard and then we will use the extraction operator and then we will place that value within the va within the variable number. Anyway, so uh, C in is basically short for character input. So C character in input, simple as that, no big deal there. Okay, so now 
we are going to go ahead and square that particular number. Let's go ahead and declare a variable in which we will store that number. Uh, squared equals number number. Basically, this is a square. You will, this is like, yeah, just one times itself. Simple enough. I don't think I need to explain what a square of a number is. Semicolon here. Now we have declared a variable squared here. I have only named it squared. It is up to you, as I've explained it before, to name variables pretty much whichever way you want, but it is a standard and a good programming practice to name them in some sort of a meaningful way. So I have declared this variable and directly I will assign the result of multiplying two numbers or I'm multiplying one number by itself. You have an asterisk sign in between and this is a binary operator. So this is the this is the asterisk sign in between, which is a binary operator and is used for multiplication. Keep in mind that the value of the variable number has not changed at all. We have simply multiplied it by itself, but we haven't stored this into number. We are storing this into the variable squared. So the, the value of the variable number still stays the same. No change there. Okay, next out. std colon colon c out lesser lesser than sign. Uh, squared number uh, quotation marks of course and we're going to do this we're basically just formatting the output onto the screen we want to make it as pretty as we can so that people can actually read it is and we're gonna do this a bit unnecessary all of this could have been placed in one in one line but it's okay fine no problems and we're gonna go ahead and do this again. Now we shall insert a variable here. Squared to this std colon colon and l, meaning we're going into the next line. And l is not only used to go into the next line, but it flushes the current buffer. It empties it completely. That's why you can also use uh, slash n, backslash n, which is a character for a new line. But in a lot of cases, it is better to use ndel as it's a buffer. Uh, it, it, it's a buffer, basically, it just flashes the entire buffer. There's nothing that remains in it. So this will print out the squared number. Down below, we can again use std c out which will be, of course, printed out in the next line due to the usage of endl squared number. Ah, okay. Lesser, lesser than sign. Number, here we're using the variable number whose value is going to be placed here. And let's go ahead and type in is space, do this, number times number because you can also perform operations here directly you don't need to perform them separately from this and in such a way we would actually save ourselves the trouble of declaring this variable to store this value but if we do it like this this value won't be stored anywhere and we won't be able to reuse it later well anywhere is a relative term but i'm just saying that we won't be able to reuse this value elsewhere unless we store it into some sort of a variable and now we can basically just do this. I don't want to do it like that. Let's just do it here. And L semicolon. Excellent. So this will once again print out the square number. But we can directly print it out. We cannot directly print out the squared num the squared value without declaring the value squared, as I said, because then we can actually store it. And once this va once this squared value is stored within the variable squared, 
then it can be reused elsewhere in the code as many times as we want. We won't need to type in number of times, num num some number of times, some number, and then calculate that every single time. So not only the, do we actually save space like this, but we also save the processor time because if we were to do this every single time, uh, we would occupy more processor time than we do it like this. So we just multiply them once, we store them into a variable, and then we reuse the variable on end later on to our heart's content. But if we needed the square number of this particular variable, then we would need to multiply it every single time down the, down the road without, having, without actually storing it anywhere. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you get the idea. If you don't, uh, the discussion section is always open and most welcoming to you. Now, at the end, we shall type in return zero semicolon and let's go ahead and end this. Mm, have I done this? Yes, okay, it's already there. No big deal. So let's go ahead and run our code and see what actually happens. Okay, build and run. Oh, there's a problem somewhere. What could it be? So it's stating that it's on this line. Oh, right, right, right. And L was not declared. So std colon colon. There we go. Let's go ahead and run it again. And there you go. It says enter an integer. Uh, 10. So square of 10 is 100. Press enter. There you go. Square number is 100. I seem to have an I seem to have an extra space here, but no big deal. We can fix that rather fast. And square number 10 is 100. Okay, I could have written this in a better fashion. The square, the square of a number 10 is 100 or something like that, but it really doesn't matter. I just wanted to make a point here. So now let's go ahead and make this short fix where there's an extra space and it's right here. Square number, this number squared is this number. This number squared is, and we shall do this. I don't even know I wrote it like this originally. So the square, this number squared. Uh, nah. This number, okay, let's put it like this. This number and number. Squared is blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and do this. <sighs> Again, so this number squared is 100. This number 10 squared is 100. There we go. Okay, there we go. So this number squared is 100. This number 10 squared is 100. Really irrelevant. This is just the formatting. I just wanted to show you these two main things here that you can perform some sort of an operation, get a result, store it into a variable, and then recycle that variable later on, use it in the rest of your code. For example, print it out like this, or you could actually do the math immediately in the printout, in the printout statement, and we would actually get a value from this and this would get printed out onto the screen. Anyway, I bid you farewell and I shall see you in the part, uh, in the next part, in, this, in, the, in the next tutorial of this mini chapter.